hello and welcome to Milo Marcus Garage. Today we are still working on the Honda CX, but there's been some changes, there's been some cool stuff. Mainly, what you see over there, see that little bunch of cables just lying around? That is the old electrical net. I was, you know, really trying to work this through for for over a month. How to fix this? Why didn't the lights work? Nothing worked. Pretty, pretty much everything was just so strange because I was getting different results on the same wiring setup. As in, I wired something up, and then I, you know, turned the key. Something happened, and then when I accidentally just bumped into the bike, it changed. So I was like, well, obviously there is a shorting issue and I just, I just couldn't find out where it was. I eventually did find out that lots of these cables were actually just crushed inside the wiring harness. Not sure how that happened, but they were crushed as in the cable was just squished so hard that the isolation, the rubber isolation just you know went away and you could see bare cables, basically garbage or spare parts, spare cables. So what I did is I went on the Honda CX Facebook forum, which is absolutely wonderful. I've been getting lots of help and parts from over there. And I purchased a brand, well, not brand new, but a new used, probably used, and actually not sure if it has been used because it's in very decent condition, but new wiring harness. It's a thing that goes in here and throughout here, and you know, like under here, yeah, like and then under here, and then you know up to the headlamp unit. Basically, it was pretty much plug and play, although slightly different than the original one. It works perfectly. Now watch this. Rear headlamp, and when I turn the turn signal, left, left, off, right. The right off and the best part is <coughs> this is an original 1970 actually I think it's 1979 not too certain of this one but an original Honda CX headlamp with all the chrome still sort of intact and you know original light and mounting bracket everything is you know just as it should be in here and the fun part is after I fixed the, um, you know, electrical net, look at this. Ah, it actually works! Like, actually works! So this is low beam, this is high beam, so everything works on this bike now. It's absolutely wonderful, I mean... <laughs> It's been so many months just trying to get things to light or just to work in general and now everything is just working. I'm, I'm not used to this. So um, yeah, good generally, yes, fantastic. The bike is getting just, you know, closer and closer to being finished. So we have the engine running, carbs cleaned, the, the, the electrical system is working. So now it's just, you know, front brakes, welding up the pipes from the headers to the uh, mufflers and you know, can sort of weld them together and make like a little short connector that welds them together because the H-box that I have right there, that's the H-box, that thing goes underneath the motorcycle and I think it muffles it a bit more <clears throat> as well but I'm not going to be using that one mostly because uh, that H-box does not fit this type of a CX. It's from a different series, different year, and just doesn't fit. I would need to modify it, and I I just don't think it's necessary if I need to modify an H-box, you know, to a degree that I need to start welding it. There's no point. I can just, you know, weld two small pipes between the headers and the mufflers, and that's it. I'm finished, you know? I'm done. So, um, that's good. Also, been working on the gas tank. Generally I've been actually painting lots of the parts. As you can see the headlamps painted, the fenders are painted, the side covers are painted. This is not something to be, that's like, it's not really good professional paint, it's just actually painted with a paintbrush just so the parts just look at least somewhat, you know, together because 
what I found out was actually the diff different parts, different covers, plastic covers of the bike had different colors, which was strange, but yes. Basically, um, gas tank. Now look at that. Nice and clean and black and painted. That's the Petcock screw, by the way. Um, so yeah, I went ahead and painted the um, underside of the gas tank, which was totally rusted. It was was not like you know deep rust, like pitting or stuff, but it was just a lot, a lot of surface rust, which was starting to develop into deeper rust. So um, I know this is a bit, you know, unorthodox to just paint over original paint of a gas tank that's original, that's 43 years old, but I would rather have this which does not look bad and plus this is the underside so no one really looks at it either way but I would rather have this kind of a decent black finish than the tank just rusting away in front of my eyes so what we need to do right now is again unorthodox but I will do it anyways to save the tank you see all of this side which is basically how the tank was welded it's got rust on it right Especially in these parts here, you can see that the rust is. Maybe we can try to focus the camera a little bit more. There we go, I think that's better. You can see those rust spots that go all around the skirt, the skirt of the gas tank. I will also paint those. I'm not going to touch the original, like, top paint of the gas tank. I will give it a clear coat just to stop it from rusting away. But I'm not going to change the color, I'm just going to paint here on the skirts and I painted on the underside. I am using Hammerite Unorthodox, yes. Does it work? Yes. I mean, it's a good, it's good paint, it's, it's expensive paint, it's not, you know, I know it's not proper, it's not the proper way to paint a gas tank, obviously, yes, but again, this is better than having the gas tank just rust away, so um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I need to mask off the area so I don't paint over the actually good paint or, well, decent. It's no longer good, but it's, you know, it still has that original color. Uh, so I'm just going to mask off with masking tape and paint the skirts. So that's the plan for today. In addition to, as I showed you previously, the headlamp, which, you know, I'm going to try to route the cables because right now, it's a bit of a mess, as you can probably see. I cannot fit this headlamp onto here while these are just, you know, hanging loosely. Like, so I need to do some cable management right in this area. Not too hard to do, but still, uh, you know, it's going to require some time. And then, when I finish the gas tank, oh, in addition to actually just painting the gas tank, I also bought some Ferro bed rust remover. It's um, again not sponsored, but I can definitely approve. I approve of this, this you know brand and this just stuff because it works. It, just, it, it works. It just works. So I've used it on like six or eight gas tanks already and other rust, like deeply rusted parts. This is quite a strong acid. So you really need to look, wear like gloves and eye protection when you're using this because once, <laughs> one time I actually, I was wearing gloves but the glove um, had a hole in it and I got uh, acid burned a bit. It wasn't too bad but you know it itched, it got red and it stayed there for a couple of days. So use protection when you're using this type of um, rust removal compound. You know, it's it's good, but it's also dangerous, so, you know, safety thirst, or third, fun first, and, um, yes, yes, good. Um, so yeah, that's the plan for today, so, um, I guess, um, let's get straight into it. Alright, let's start masking off this beastie.
All right, the well, the parts I want to paint are masked off. Now I just need to prepare the paint, a paintbrush, and just paint it. So yeah, I'll do that now. Alrighty, paint's ready, paintbrush ready, some gloves. I know these are kitchen gloves, but I actually <laughs> I ran out of like you know garage rubber vinyl gloves, so I have to use these. I live. So now. And obviously it's quite cold in here, so I know these are not ideal painting uh, temperatures, but you work with what you have, and this is what I have. And just bear in mind, I have a uh, fan, heater fan, running pretty much all the time in here, but you know, considering that this is the coldest winter we've had, well, ever since I moved out from Poland to Norway. It's actually, some, uh, I think the lowest temperature here was like minus 12. So, um, yeah, quite chilly and, uh, well, this, this garage is just, just not used to and meant for, you know, carrying such cold. So it's quite cold in here. It's livable, but it's definitely not pleasant. Let me tell you that. Okay, well, I'm quite pleased with the way this came out. Of course, we'll have to still paint the um, top part with clear coat, um, but that's for another day because this needs to sit and dry for probably a day. Normally, it will be just a couple of hours, but you know, considering the um, lovely temperatures we have in here, why is this open? Why is Is the bloody vent open? Come on, be serious. Close this thing. Who opened the vents here? That one's closed. Jesus Christ. And I'm wondering why it's cold in here. <sighs> Alright. Oh, well, this is a Heinz uh, Honda Owners Workshop Manual. Great book. And, um, you know, basically I've been using this as a guideline for how to fix this motorcycle. So in here, I am pretty certain that we can find something about cable management. Probably in the electrical section, which is the one that's farthest up. It's light bulbs, masses of cylinders, forks, more wiring diagrams, and now, like that. Electrical system. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can see this, but can you see this? Yeah, you can see this. Not the best, but this here is roughly how it's supposed to look inside. Not. Ah, oh, man, this is going to be hard. <laughs> it's like it's, um, it's not perfectly clean in there, but it's, um, comparison to this mess of cables that I've got on my, um, headlamp, this is going to be a wee bit hard. Oh well, we'll try. We'll try our best. 
and see how that goes. Okie dokie, uh, so as you can see I've disconnected all the cables. I now know what all the cables do, so if you guys have any questions about what cable does what, I can help you with that to some degree, because obviously every wiring harness is slightly different on these bikes, as I've noticed previously. But, uh, you know, having them disconnected, I can finally see some possible ways of trying to f make them fit nicely and snugly. A uh, couple of problems that I'm sort of seeing is that these cables are a bit generally generally these cables are a bit just messy in general so um, like you know the, the ones that actually clip together are fine but those loose connections over here are the ones that make most trouble because it's just uh, there isn't actually there isn't really much actual like proper place to fit them, they kind of just have to squeeze in there together with the other stuff. So we'll have to figure out how to make them fit. But first, I'm going to try to make some smart ways to fit those um, fitting connections in the headlamp, you know, unit. Um, just because, in theory, if I and I'm not sure if you can see these, you probably can't, but in here, like here and here, there are slots, and uh, these slots are meant to kind of just slide, make those slight, those connectors kind of just slot in them and keep them in place. So I'm gonna try to figure out which one goes where and how to, you know, how to, um, just how to wire them through those and probably make a bracket, sort of a just a holding kind of you know hook, maybe one or two. But we'll see. So oh it's cold. So let's get into that. I'm not gonna be filming this because you know this is too much of a try and error task and I don't have a way to do this. I kind of have to figure everything out by myself. So um I'll just keep you updated when I actually make some progress with this. So as you can see these cables are now connected and they are nicely routed in and sitting, sitting in these slots. So behind this red one is a green one which they, they sort of go together so it would make sense to have the one after another and there is you know actually enough space for both of them to just fit it properly. Ah, there we go. Doesn't that look good and professional? Look at that wiring, huh? Alright, let's continue on with the other ones. It's, um, it's going to take a while. Although this does not look like much, it is. Mainly because if I am nice and gentle, I can squish everything in here and there is still space inside. So I think this actually might be good enough, but <laughs> I need to test if, uh, test if everything is wired up correctly, and I can't because I again blew the main fuse. So time to change a fuse. Be right back. Haha. <laughs> now look at that. Lamp. It's um, it's not sitting perfectly. There is still some work to do with it. Like this thing here keeps popping out, sort of, but it's there and it does run, everything runs. Although um, I blew a fuse and the fuse holder actually desoldered itself, so you can solder that now. But the lamp fits and everything just, it just looks so much just better. It's a small detail, but it's just, it's just there and it's just so cool. Yeah, good stuff, really good stuff. I mean, <laughs> the bike's getting really close to being finished and we've got like, you know, exhaust to fix, brakes, and um, that's pretty much it, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Man, this project's really flying forward, isn't it? All right, I think this will be it for today's episode. So, 
Yeah, the gas tank is pretty much, uh, well, the, the painting part, the painting part of, you know, restoring the gas tank is done. Now we need to just fill it with acid and, you know, de-gunk it from inside. The electrical stuff, I would say we are pretty much done. The front light works, it's there, you know, low, high, left blinker, forward and rear work, right blinker, forward and rear work, the actual, you know, lamps, indicators over here, like on the dashboard, actually work as well, and I can say that the dashboard the lights that, you know, light it up during, you know, night drives and stuff like that work as well. Um, let's see, does this work? This also works. This is the, um, like, light horn. That's what we call it in Norway. It's basically a button, you know, you can do you can do Morse code and stuff like that. And the horn works as well. Starter works as well. Um, and yeah, there isn't anything else in the, on this bike, so it works, everything works. It's, you know, electrical stuff is done. <laughs> so I think that's uh, pretty good. I mean, I would say maybe a month or two and this bike was, it will be ready to drive. So um, yeah, good stuff. Well, I hope you enjoy this uh, video. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments. I will try to answer all of them as, uh, you know, on, from the best of my abilities on this bike and stuff like that. Like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, and uh, yeah, more videos are coming. Videos are on the way. As always, keep on riding.